could absolutely take advantage of and I, it doesn't mean that they're going to do it, but you know I see a path for them. If, uh, if particularly if the if the quarterback elevates his game, that's ESPN Eagles reporter Tim McManus with Kenny and Garland on if you should bet the Eagles to win the NFC East. Keyshawn J. Will and Max this morning joined by Sam Acho at six forty five Eastern and Jeremy Fowler, ESPN senior NFL reporter at seven fifteen. Freddie Coleman, Harry Douglas in the seat. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max every weekday morning from 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPN News. Meantime, after our practice, a uh, video circulated on Twitter appearing to show a major brawl. Bengals-Rams ended their joint practice session after a chippy day that ended with Aaron Donald repeatedly swinging a helmet at Bengals players. Players threw fists and helmets during scuffles, uh, leading to a final free-for-all with Donald getting thrown to the ground. Adam Schefter, and if the league might punish the All-Pro. The league stance is this. Clubs are responsible for overseeing the conduct of their own players at practice, including joint practices between two teams like the one today between the Bengals and the Rams. So any discipline that would be handed down against the Rams defensive tackle, Aaron Donald, would have to come from the Rams themselves. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the Rams are not going to suspend Aaron Donald for their season opening game two weeks from tonight <laughs> against the Buffalo Bills and that Aaron Donald is expected to play in the regular season opener. I don't think the Rams will take that drastic of an action against their all-world defensive lineman. Yeah, Bengals coach Zach Taylor downplaying the event. The Bengals and Rams, who played in the Super Bowl in February, each face each other. Final preseason game Saturday night in Cincinnati. Did they go at it? Because they were the last two standing for the Super Bowl. Sarah Boshop on Kenny and Carlin. You know, Sean McVay was asked that before these joint practices, and he said he didn't think that would be a problem. Now, I don't believe Collins was on the Bengals roster last year or didn't play in the Super Bowl, so I don't think that would have um, contributed to it. But um, I'm sure there was some drawing back and forth over the two days, but nothing like the fight that ended um at the end of practice. Yeah, from the NBA, terrible news for Oklahoma City. The Thunder, Chet Holmgren, the second overall pick in the NBA draft, will miss the coming season with a right foot injury. He was hurt by playing in a pro-am game in Seattle last weekend, sustaining a Liz Frank injury. Holmgren got hurt while defending LeBron James on the subject of playing pro-ams or meaningless basketball games in the offseason. And if teams will encourage players to avoid those games, Myron Metcalf, on Barton Hahn. I think that that's the wrong response. And I see it happening everywhere. People are saying, pull all the NBA guys out of these pro-ams. Uh, you know, don't allow them to play in events that aren't all NBA or attached to NBA facilities. And I just think that's the, the wrong deal. Like, Chad Ongren didn't get hurt because someone fouled him in a weird way or, or something happened that might not have happened on an NBA court. He just landed awkwardly. And listen, th there aren't any bigger Chet fans than, than I am. I mean, I follow him through his high school career. He's a Minnesota guy. I know the family. I hate this, man, especially since big men with these kinds of injuries, sometimes they don't bounce back. But I don't think you can say pull these guys out of the events because that's to imply that something with the event itself is why he got hurt, and that's not the case. ESPN injury analyst Stefania Bell breaking down Holmgren's injury prognosis. So it's named after a significant ligament in the middle of your foot, and when it's disrupted, it creates instability in the foot, and that's why you need to get it fixed. So surgical repair is what will happen, and then it's a lengthy recovery. You know, it can be four to six months months to get all the way back from it. But the good news is once it's repaired and once you get reconditioned and readapt to the sport, you should be fine going forward. There should not be any lingering issues for him. We don't hear about it as much in basketball. We hear about it much more in football. Uh, just to give you an example, Travis Etienne, star running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars, missed the entire season last year because he too had an injury before the season started. But he's back and looking great in training camp and ready to go. So Chad Holmgren can take a look at the NFL and be encouraged by okay. some of the guys who've come back from this. Yeah, that is encouraging. And Freddie Coleman and Harry Douglas in the seat, as I mentioned. Keyshawn J. Will and Max this morning joined by ESPN NBA front office insider Bobby Marks. He'll give his insight on this injury and playing in those tournaments in the offseason. Coming up, the Yankees get back a key bat but lose a big arm. Ditto for the Phillies. While Paul Goldschmidt continues his torrid season. That's on deck. This is Sports Center All Night on ESPN Radio.